Today I'm going to show you my favorite way of wiring up the Crawl Master V2. The Crawl Master V2 is getting ready to release and we're going to be selling it at first as a bareboard unit. And I don't mean completely bareboard. A few people asked about that. It will be operational. It will have all the components on there, but nothing will be soldered to it as far as your leads are concerned. I don't think I want everybody to populate boards by themselves. It's something that I don't even want to do. So what you would get with your Crawlmaster V2 is the bare ESC. You will get a power cap. You will have a piece of heat shrink to cover it up and you'll also get your RX wire. And then what we will have available as soon as we get our last shipment of wires in is a wiring kit and that will come with your motor leads and your battery lead as well. So let's just get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to hold your soldering iron properly back here on the insulated piece. Don't be grabbing it down here at the tip. No, no, no. You've probably seen this ad online before the girl. She's, she's got her safety glasses, which I probably need my safety glasses. I don't see them around. Uh, so let's add that to the list. You need your safety glasses. You need to hold your soldering iron properly, which assumes that you have a soldering iron. You will probably need some cutters of some sort. Of course, you'll need your solder. And in my case, I want a knife so that I can easily cut my insulation down on my wires. All right, as far as irons are concerned, you need something that's pretty beefy. These little TS-100s, they're not gonna quite do the job, but something like a Hakko FX888, any of these decent, whatever you would call this sort of soldering iron is, a benchtop soldering iron. You need something that's got some wattage to it. You don't necessarily need a big beefy tip for this, but on this particular unit, I'm having to turn it up to about 425 Celsius just to have enough heat to do our soldering job. I would recommend that you use a solder with a little bit of silver in there at least. Maybe you're a leaded sort of guy and you're going to use leaded solder on there. I wouldn't recommend that, but it is going to be an easier time of soldering. So this is lead free. I only use lead free. So we're going to use lead free. It's going to be difficult, but we're going to do it. It's actually not going to be that bad. So my soldering iron is heating up and I'm just going to do this free form on the tabletop, just like you might have in your house when we're doing this in the shop. I, I'm going to have a little jig to kind of hold this in. It could be a piece of cardboard with a flap cut in it. It could be a 3D printed jig that this slides into to keep it from moving around. For all that it matters, you could just put a little bit of weight on it that keeps it from moving around. I'm just going to kind of freeform it out here in the open. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pre tin all of our pads with some solder. And I'm going to put the RX wire on the opposite side from all the other wires. The reason why I'm doing that is that it gives us a little bit more room for our power cap to nestle into a nice thin package. Now on the power cap, the negative is shown with the shorter leg and also the colored on the top of the cap. We will need to know that later. But first, here we go. We're going to pre tin these pads, a little solder on the soldering iron tip, and I'm just dragging it right across. One, two, three. There we go. Now I'm going to do our motor pads. Now in previous videos, I've told you don't add solder to your soldering iron tip. It's bad for the tip. It will eat the tip away. And really I'm not adding anything to the tip more than is needed just to get a little bit of flow going. And then I'm putting the rest onto the PCB or in between the soldering iron and the PCB, letting that heat do the work. As you can see, bam, 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 one, two, three, nice and shiny. We got a, a decent amount built up on there. It'll do the job. Now you should be doing this with plenty of ventilation. We don't have a ventilation fan going on right now because it's, it's actually pretty hard to hear over the ventilation fan, but you should have ventilation. You should have ventilation. All right. So I got everything pre tinned as you can see, one, two, three, one, two on there. And then, the RX lead pads on the back side here. So we look really close. Our ground is going to be closest to the ground pad. So looking on this back side here, it goes ground, our five volt, and then our signal, just like that. So that's how I'm gonna solder them up. And again, this is just kind of free floating around the table. If I have too much trouble, I'm gonna grab something just to keep it from moving, but I'm gonna do it just like most people are gonna be doing it at home. We just do a little, little wham bam, ah, maybe a little extra solder just so I can get the heat flowing just a little bit. 
Just a little bit, I, I swear. Just enough. You don't want too much because it'll blob up, but these pads are pretty far apart so that you probably won't have an issue with solder bridging your pads. Just be careful. Just be careful that you don't get solder in a place that it's not supposed to go. Now, of course, I, I feel like I must mention if you're soldering your own ESC, then you need to be slightly skilled. This is pretty small solder work, at least for the RX wire. We would offer these completely built up right out of the gate. However, we are currently experiencing a pretty severe labor shortage. Uh, just like everywhere in the world, the pick and place factory, they don't have enough labor to do this. I'm gonna add a little bit more solder to this particular joint. There we go, perfect. Um, our exporter, their normal soldering labor, well, that factory doesn't have enough extra manpower to make this happen. Uh, we don't have enough manpower in the house, in-house. So just, just all the way around, we're, we're experiencing labor shortages in the world right now, in particular for people that are good at soldering. So what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna do this bare board first. This video will help you out. If you don't know which way to solder it, or if you, if you need some help on the order of operations. So I'm adding a little bit of solder to these wires just so we can get some heat transfer going and then pushing them down onto the PCB. There we go, looks good. Nice solder joint all the way around. And this is when it would actually help. I'm just gonna use this guy. Uh, let's see, can you still see on the overhead? You can still see what I'm doing on the overhead. Unfortunately, it does hide what I'm doing from the front shot. So apologies on that, but that just makes it easier. I am going to, I'm gonna do it behind this heavier object. You can use anything. But it doesn't have to be fancy. Nope, nope, nope. All right, so we, we heat it up until everything's nice and globby. We hold it in place. There we go. Power wires are on. Next thing we need to do is get our power cap on. So, negative, make sure there's that uh, short lead is the negative side. I am just gonna give it a, a bend like this, you know, uh, like uh, Captain Morgan putting his leg up onto something. And we are gonna ki kind of shove this way over to the side. Uh, the reason that I'm doing it this way and not just putting it in the middle is so that we just have more room honestly. And then a little little bend on that. Let's see. Uh, let's show the camera. Here's our negative leg right there. Come on, focus. I think that's focused. Let me just double tap and make sure. Focus. I think that's focused or focus good enough. There we go. Now you can see we got our leg bent that way and that one kind of straight out with just a little bitty bend to it. That is the proper way, in my opinion, just so you can see, at least that's a good way. It's a good way, if nothing else. So what I'm gonna do to put this power cap in, we're just gonna kind of tack it in place at first on one side, and then we go back and forth to solder it in all the way. That makes it a little easier just to, just to get it in, in one spot first. Bam, just like that, it's gonna hold. Now I go over to the other side. We're gonna get our negative. And you don't wanna melt the entire solder joint, but melting half of it. Now, alternatively, you could solder the power cap to the opposite side of our PCB. We do have power pads over there, but I'm doing it this way just so it's a little more flush and, and uh, low profile. So I'm adding a good bit of solder, running right down that leg, melting basically half of the solder that we'd already put on there on the previous task. And then it kind of clumps together and there we go. That's what it looks like. All right, focus, we'll, we'll get it right up there to focus. Perfect. And as you can see, it's on there. It's good, nice and flush, looking good. Next step, we go to the motor wires. Now, I don't need motor wires this long, so I'm going to cut these in half. Hmm, a little magnetic here. 
There we go. Going to cut these in half and then I shall strip a little bit of the wire insulation off. About three inches long. Honestly, both sides about three inches long is what I'm finding works best for almost all of my rigs. Our wiring kits will be a little longer. Just so you have some extra room to work with. One, two, three. You don't want to cut into the wires, just a little bit of pressure. You can get this insulation off. Now I'm going to twist these together, getting my oils all over it. Not really recommended, but I'm twisting them together so that the wires don't fray when we try to push them down on the board. Typically, I would tell you to pre-tin these and then go into solder, but what I'm going to try today is doing it all at once. So I'm just going to push down with a nice, clean and hot tip. I'm going to add solder directly to the wire on top. And what should happen is that we get to pre-tin this at the exact same time. Got to add enough solder, of course, to pre-tin and then there we go. That looks good. We wait for it to solidify. Yeah, perfect. Kind of saving a step here. Just got to make sure that we add enough solder so that the rosin core penetrates and fluxes everything. And we, we provide nice high quality wire, so it really won't be an issue. There we go. You want to try to make sure that you don't move it around while the solder is solidifying either. It needs to be one nice connection all at one time. There we go. Last ones. Fill her up. And let it cool down. Perfect. And that looks pretty good. Now we are ready to put on our heat shrink. You can do this with uh, possibly a lighter or a heat gun. Let's see, what do I have in my pocket? Nothing, nothing but money. So I'll get a heat gun out. You can do it with a hairdryer, a heat gun, a lighter, like I was saying, just anything that makes heat. There we go. This one is adjustable temperature. I'll turn it up to about a five out of 15. We'll see if that's hot enough. Oh yeah, that'll do. So we have an assembled unit. There you go. So I always recommend that you add this external cap. The ESC has been very well tested without the external cap, but we have found best stability when you have that. So I would recommend it. It is on there, but let's say you're using something really low, like a 1400 kV motor on 3S. Honestly, the external cap may not be needed, but just as a good recommendation, I do say you should probably put it on there. And that way, if you ever you know, sell this to somebody else or get rid of it or change your motors as you're older, you, you will already be ready for higher kV motors, something like a 2500 kV running on 4S. This ESC will do it, but it does beat on the ESC pretty hard, so the external cap helps reduce our ripple voltage. There you go. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. And as always, thanks for tuning in and have a great day.